dear Bishop Jeremy Bless McQuest, you, Bless you. your family and the church. Amen. Bishop McGregor, when he saw the topic, amen, he decided to, to close, to suspend his Wednesday night services for the series throughout this month, amen, to allow the members to join Bethel, amen, for the study, amen, throughout this month. Praise God. God bless you, Bishop McGregor. And God bless all the members from God Tab tonight. We welcome you with open arms and we give God thanks for you in Jesus' name. A special welcome to those who are with us from the UK. It's very late, early morning in the UK, but in, from London to Birmingham, you're with us and we acknowledge you and we thank God for you. Praise God. God bless you. So tonight we are about to embark on a new series, a, a study which I think to my mind is very relevant. Amen to time is we're living in. Uh, and the Lord, we want to thank God for having led us to really focus in this era of, of ministry. So we are about to, amen, start a study on deception. Deception. And uh, so we want to understand uh, deception. We want to expose deception, and we want to focus especially on end time deception, praise God. Now, Jesus said, amen, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name and say, I am Christ. Amen. So a feature of the end time, amen, is the whole, the whole matter, amen, of deception. Uh, St. Paul said to his son, Timothy, he said, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving, and then they themselves will be deceived. Amen. So we want to really focus on deception on tonight, praise God. So we want to thank God for, amen, a friend, a brother, praise God, Bishop Dr. Colin Cawley, amen, pastor at Mount Zion of the church in Toronto, Canada, also the president and bishop for the group of churches worldwide. Amen. We want to welcome him back on our platform as our main teacher, as our teacher for this series, praise God Almighty, to his family, amen, Lady Corley and the children and the wonderful members who are with us also tonight from Mount Zion, wonderful church. If ever you're in Canada, in Toronto, here, please stop by Mount Zion. And Mount Zion is a wonderful place where the word is preached and the saints are lively with their worship. Amen. So God bless you. So right after the teacher will be facilitating a segment for Q&A. We want to receive uh, your questions that I'm sure we'll answer them and also for you to share your takeaway with us right after the teaching. So without no further ado, it is my delight, my delight on behalf of Bethel Stone to present to you a friend or brother Amen, Bishop Dr. Colin Cawley. Amen, along with the others from Mount Zion. Again, God bless you, Bishop Frank Utter. God bless you. Amen, Bishop McGregor and other pastors. God bless you tonight as we move into this brand new series. Over to you, Bishop Cawley. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Brown. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Amen. Special greetings to you tonight, Bishop Brown and your dear wife and to all the families of, of Bethel, amen, we salute you, amen. Special greetings to Bishop Utter, amen. I haven't seen him a long time, but special greeting, Bishop Frank Utter, amen, in the name of the Lord, amen, to Bishop McGregor, amen, and to all the pastors that are online, amen, to all the saints of God, amen, globally that is watching us virtually tonight, we salute you and greet you, in the wonderful name of Jesus, our soon coming King, our Savior, and our Keeper. Praise God. And so tonight we are embarking on a new series, amen, uh, which is called, amen, Exposing the Spirit of Deception in this age that we are living in. And certainly, amen, for the past. been focusing on on the spirit of deception because I see that it was it was a prominent amen tool that the enemy was using and uh, I was aware of what Jesus says 
that if it were possible, amen, even the very elect would have been deceived. And so with what the Spirit shows, you could see that deception has been a very uh, powerful tool that the enemy has been using in our world today. All right, to in the interest of time, there are two passages of scriptures for your consideration that I wish to, um, to read tonight, and then we will move straight into our, our teaching tonight. Amen. St. Matthew chapter 24, reading verse 24. And it reads thus, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show sign, great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And then 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13. And it says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And, and that text comes from the prophecy of Bishop, are you muted, sir? Are you muted? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir, yes, sir. All right. So the word deceive means to ensnare, to be false, cheat, to cause to believe an untruth or an... All right, and so that is what deception really means. Now, <clears throat> deception first began in the Garden of Eden. In the book of Genesis 3, verse 1. Now, the serpent was more subtle or crafty uh, than any of the other animals that the Lord God has made. And, and the discussion between the, the serpent and the woman and how the, the, the enemy subtly inserted into the argument or the statement of Jesus and told the woman that you shall become like God. So causing her to believe, all right? And so that's where deception began in the garden. And so Jeremiah also tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can understand it? And, and in Matthew that we have just read, we have read what will happen and what will come upon the earth. And so the objective of this series of lessons is one, to give biblical examples of how deception is manifested. Number two, to give biblical exhortations concerning deception. Number three, to observe specific characteristics of a deceptive spirit. Number four, to observe deception that affects the church and believers in general. And then number five, to learn ways to discern and overcome deceptions. Now, how are some of the biblical examples of how deception is, is manifested? It is manifested out of your mouth, out of your lips, out of your tongue. It 
comes out of your mouth. According to Psalms 10 and verse 7. Amen. Jeremiah 9 and verse 8. It comes also out of bad advice that is given. It comes out of being fraudulent. It comes out of rebellion. Because a rebellious heart cannot give godly counsel. Other ways is refusal to acknowledge the Lord Jesus. It comes from deceptive leaders or prophets, according to Jeremiah 14, verse 14, and 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. It comes from people who have rejected God. It comes from, from deceptive philosophies. It comes from false witnesses, false affections. It comes from those who reject the truth. It comes from false thinking. It comes from people who claim that they are, they have no sin, they are without sin. It comes from pride of heart. And it comes from false sacrifice. And lastly, it comes from incorrect evaluation of oneself. These are aware, amen, the examples of how deception is manifested as such. Biblical ex exhortations concerning deceptions. You got to exhort with a pure motive. So if the motive is not pure, then the counsel is tainted. Your motive has got to be right. Anything that one does within the church, within the body of Christ, should be done with the right motive. Got to have the right motive. And if the right motive is not there, then ultimately you will see the manifestation of, of that motive. Because once that motive is not met, then there will be a manifestation of that evil spirit. You got to speak truth. Also, you got to be sensitive and aware to false prophets. Matthew 24, 5 tells us. St. Luke 21, 8 tells us. 2 Timothy 3, 13 tells us. You've got to be aware and sensitive to false prophets. Remember what Jesus says. Many is going to speak in my name. And they're going to say, lo, here is God. He says, don't believe. You've got to grow in spiritual maturity so to avoid deception. If you're not spiritually matured, then you will easily accept an error for truth. It's important that the child of God grow in spiritual maturity or else you will be deceived as such. You got to be able to discern empty words. When people are speaking without the anointing, when people are speaking from, from just, just, just articulation or, or the ability, amen, to pronunciate or, or articulate, you got to discern between. that The anointing has a sound. There is a distinction. This is the people that knows the joyful sound. The Holy Ghost carries a sound. The anointing carries a sound. Amen. Not just words. It carries a particular distinctive sound to it. Our church carries a sound. When the preacher who is anointed speaks, there is a sound to that anointing that they speak with. Not just words, 
Amen. Not just speaking from, from the educational acumen that they have stored up in their mind. No, you need the anointing. It is that that gives the distinction between all other churches. It is the anointing that rests in that house that makes the distinction. Remember, when Solomon builds the temple, it was just another building. The only time that that building had distinction was when he put the ark of God in his right place in that building. And as soon as he put the ark in that building, it becomes the temple of God. What makes the distinction with the church is the anointing. Be careful of empty words. We've got to reject worship of false God. We've got to live sexually pure lives according to God's standards, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. We've got to believe, beloved, that whatever we sow, we will reap. And Paul tells Timothy in, in, in his, in his, in his uh, admonition, amen, and last discourse, discourses to Timothy, he said, beware of evil men and seduce, beware, I'm not aware, watch, look out for them as such. And lastly, reject the sinful passions of life. Now, how are we gonna recognize these specific characteristics, amen, of, of a deceptive spirit, amen? Lying, giving a false information with the desire to deceive. Lying, giving false information with the desire to deceive. Delusions, deceiving self into believing lies. Because what you must understand, beloved, is that the person who is deceived does not recognize that they are deceived. So they don't even know that they are deceived. And there are many people now that are deceived and don't know that they are deceived. Wrong doctrines, misuse of scriptures. In other words, they are reasoning a conclusion or a position, then using the Bible to support the conclusion. Wrong doctrine and misuse of scriptures, all of that are, are specific characteristics of a deceptive spirit. But, but as you opening, one of the things that we must understand is that Many people get deceived, amen, because their hearts are not pure. And it is important that the heart of individuals, amen, are clean. Bible said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, Allow me now to, to look at the kind of hearts. And that's why so many people are deceived. Now, people who have been hurt, if their hurts are not healed, they are a candidate for deception. A lot of people who have been deceived are people who was once hurt and has never dealt with their hurt. They have not dealt with church hurt and so they carry. And so when unforgiveness controls and dominate their heart, that is a heart that can be easily deceived by Satan. That's why the power of forgiveness is so important in the life of people because there are so many people 
they're smiling, but they have been hurt and, and they have not dealt with their hurt. And sadly to say that even in their old age, when they should be aging gracefully and, 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 and become an example, it is in those old age that you find bitterness, amen, just coming out of them because they have not dealt with all these hurts in their younger age. Uh, and so now the, the hurt becomes the dominant force that rules them and control them. Uh, and I've seen many people in their old age, rather than become good counsel and an example, when you have to talk with them intimately, all is coming out of their fountain is bitter water, bitter water, because they have not, People like those are easily deceived by the enemy. And the devil loves people like those. That's why the devil loves when we are unforgiven. He will, he will write on that. <clears throat> but let's look, let look, let look at the heart here. Okay, you are going to make sure, amen, if you're not deceived that we have a clean heart. Got to make sure we've got a, a pure heart, uh, amen, uh, because some hearts are wicked hearts. Amen. You're going to have a pure heart and not a double heart. Amen. That you have a wise and understanding heart and not a foolish heart. Amen. That you have a broken and a contrite heart and not a hard heart. And the Lord says to through the mouth of the prophet that, that he will visit the broken and the contrite heart. He will revive the broken and the contrite heart. I live in the loft and high place. I will visit. I cannot pass the broken and the contrite heart. There must be a tenderness to our heart, tender hearted, not a bitter heart. Man, we must possess, amen, a meek and a lonely heart, not a proud heart. Amen. We must have a good and a faithful heart, not an unbelieving heart. Amen. Uh, I must have a sound and an upright heart and not a heart that has been deceived to believe that the heart is clean. Amen. And, and so it, it is the state of one's heart that allows such persons, amen, to be able to to resist and to fight, amen, and go against, amen, at the deceptive force of the enemy, amen, that is prevalent today. Now, it is Jesus who won. It is the Apostle Paul now who tells us as he writes to Timothy, amen, know this also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come, right? We are living in that last of the last days now. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. And he itemizes, he catalyzes what that those spirits will be in the last days. And he speaks of covetousness. He speaks of boasters. He speaks of people being proud. He speaks of blasphemers. He speaks of disobedient to parents. He speaks of people who are unthankful, unholy, he speaks of people who, don't, who have lost natural affection. He talks about truth breakers. He talks about false accusers. He talks about fierce, amen, and despisers uh, of good. He talks about traitors and heavy and high-mindedness, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And so look at what's happening now. It, it is so important. You can amass a lot of people Amen. To, 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 to entertainment in church, to, to performances in church, to concerts in church. All right. Where people perform. You can get, you can get 10,000, 15,000 people to come out to all of these, 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 these dramas and these, these performance arts and artistic things that, that will, so to entertain people. All right. But you won't, you can't find them for prior meeting. You, you can't find them, amen, for, for counting session. You can't find them, amen, for instructional class. 
But but if you say they're going to be a concert, we're going to be, and these are the, the stop artists that's going to come. Man, yeah, amen. You got to, you got to find three tents outside, amen, for the attendance that will come. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And so now what we find is that people will, will switch and will give people more concert than preparing the hearts of people for the coming of God. And so that also is a deception because we, we, we think that entertainment and all of these theatrics can prepare people's hearts for the coming of God. And so we have the best organist and, and, and the best guitarist and, and the best drummer. Nothing wrong with that. But if the role is that we have switched the order of the church it, as to entertainment, rather than preparing the hearts of people, then we are being deceived because the entrance of God's word is what help people. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we have left the simplicity of the teaching of the word of God. And now we are gendering all of these performance things into the church into this thing and believe that that can prepare the hearts and the minds of people. It is a word that cleans the heart. It is a word that prepares us. And we cannot replace the word with songs and performance and dancing. Lovers of flesh more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And Paul says, from such turn away. For of this thought are those which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. And then he talks about Janis and, and Jambri who withstood Moses and fight Moses as we have today. Men challenges leadership. All right, men telling you, amen, I have the anointing too. They're men challenging. All of these are the error of deception because they, they're sitting on a platform, amen, as such, and believe that they are right. Because remember, if a man is deceived, he does not even know that he is deceived. He's acting like he is true. Amen. Paul said these are corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. Their minds are darkened, pavement. Praise God. And it is in that same vein that the apostle now says, but evil men and seducers shall wax cold. Evil men and seducers shall wax cold. cold. Amen. Uh, shall wax worse, deceiving and being deceived. So, so that. That is what happening in these days now. So, so this is where now, amen, in these days that has arisen all these uh, new doctrines and, and, and all these new things, amen, come into the house of God, into the church of God. Now, one of the first step to deception is, is confronting self-deception. Satan tempts us to sin. That's his job. Amen. And, and this is one of his most insidious weapon is deception. Because we don't know when we are being deceived. If, we're, if you're not sensitive, if you don't have the discernment, if we don't have the spirit of God, we can be deceived and don't even know it. Remember, he is the father of lies. Amen. That's why you notice in Ephesians, the apostle Paul, of all the, the armor that the child of God should wear, you will note that the belt of truth 
is the first piece of our protective armor. The belt of truth. Why? Because we are dealing with lies. We are dealing with deception. So one of the first piece of armor that the child of God must put on is the belt of truth. Praise God. And Jesus prays that we would be kept from the evil one in this world. And he asks God to sanctify us through his word in St. John chapter 17. Praise God. Now, let me, let me list, identify at least eight, eight ways that we can deceive ourselves. Number one, we can deceive ourselves if we listen to the word of God, but don't do what the word of God says. That's why James said, don't be a hero, but a doer of the word. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God. The Bible said, it is useful or profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and training in righteousness. And Second Peter chapter 3 and 16 tells us we will be self-deceived if we think the Bible is just a textbook that provides us with knowledge. No, the, the Bible is much more than that. Amen. Number two. We can deceive ourselves if we say we have no sin. 1 John 1 verse 8. All right? We cannot say we don't have sin. Amen. The Lord, amen. If any man does that, he deceives himself. The reason why we are saved is because we were sinful and the Lord has died in our stead. Amen. And allow us to now have power over the dominion of sin in our lives. Amen. And so it is the power of the Holy Ghost that enable us now to live above and have the ability to resist temptations. Number three, we can deceive ourselves if we think we are something when we are not. All right. So this is where again, uh, when we think of ourselves, the Bible says we are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. And, and that's why, beloved, we got to be careful that, that we don't allow people to worship us. People worship God. We are servants of God, and they are to show us, give us honor, but at the same time, don't move the honor to worship. Amen. Or else we will take the place of God. Remember in the scripture, when, when, when Herod realized that the angel of the Lord had delivered Peter out of prison, and, and when he made a great oration, and the people lauded him like a god, he took the praise and immediately worms at him. Because remember, the Lord will not share his glory with anyone. Remember Nebuchadnezzar again. God raised up Nebuchadnezzar. God allowed him to build Babylon. And the day he said, this is Babylon that I have built. Amen. God brought him down. So we got to be careful that we don't take the praise of Almighty God. Amen. We, we are still mortality and we must give the praise unto him. He is worthy. He alone is worthy. As a matter of fact, mortality was not built to take praises. We can hang the praise. We're not built to take praises. Because if we start to get praise, that's where, if we don't reckon who we are, that we are frail of mortal beings, even being enabled by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. It is easy for success people to move into pride. And you can get deceived right there. The greatest danger to success is pride. You can think it's by your ability. You can think it's by your skill that you're where you are. Praise God. And when you think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, you have deceived yourself. Number four, we can deceive ourselves when we think we are wise in this age. Paul warns some people, and he said they profess themselves to be wise, but he said they are fools. And so, so our help, our wisdom comes from the Lord. That's where we get our strength from, from the Lord. Number five, we can deceive ourselves when we think we are religious, but do not keep a rein on our tongue. You cannot be a righteous person and does not know how to control your tongue. The tongue is the most dangerous member in our body. As a matter of fact, when the writer describes it, he said it is set on the pit of hell. He says all other, amen, even animals can maintain but the tongue is set on the pit of hell. It curses and it prays God. It criticizes and it compliments. It speaks all. It is a dangerous member in the body. So if you don't know how to bridle and control your tongue, amen, then indeed, you can be deceived because if you can't brag with your tongue, you have allowed your body to be sinful all the time. He who cannot bridle his tongue always go into sinful uh, exercises because you allow your tongue to allow your body to become sinful because you cannot bridle, control your tongue. It is so dangerous that the writer compares it and says, with a large ship, they can use an anchor, but the tongue can no maintain. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, to tame the tongue. And if you don't have that bridle and control over your tongue, then, then, then you all the time you're leading your body into sinful, sinful uh, exercise. Number six. We can deceive ourselves when we think we will not reap what we sow. Every child of God, we're going to reap what? That's a principle that is true. Every man will reap what he sows. But some people have convinced themselves that they will not reap what they sow. And so they continue to do wrong. They continue to be malicious. They continue to do all kinds of, of, of unethical things. You will reap what you sow. Amen. You continue to steal. One day you will reap what you sow. It's a law that does not change. It's a law and the principle of sowing and reaping. But when you believe you're not going to get it, then you have deceived yourself. But as night fall a day, you will receive what you sow. Number seven, we can deceive ourselves when we think the unrighteous will inherit the kingdom of God. 
If you think that an unrighteous person can inherit the kingdom of God, you have deceived yourself. I'm used to sing, brother, no sin, no sin at all. No sin cannot enter there. Remember in the old days, we used to sing those songs. Amen. But we don't sing them anymore. So maybe that's why we have forgotten them and believe unrighteousness can inherit the kingdom of God. No. And righteousness cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You've got to be pure. That's why Jesus says, he says, narrow is the way that leadeth to life. Narrow. But he says, broad is the way that leadeth. And many shall find it. Many shall find it. Because people still believe, amen, that an unrighteous person, you can do sin and enter into the kingdom of God. No. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart. Amen. Only the righteous. Remember, the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. The way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. And so if, if the Lord is concerned about the righteous, that speaks to the fact that, that if you are not righteous, if you are not godly, if you are not holy, then why did the Bible say, um, Apostle Peter said, it is written, be holy for I am holy. And holy means that you are free from defilement. You are free from, from, from all impurities. That means you are holy. Be holy for I am holy. That is the command of God to the church. Amen. Because salvation has two parts to it. Amen. The, the, the salvation God gives us. He calls us. Amen. That, that's the part of God. He, he calls us. And, and, and he washes us and he forgives us of our sins. That's God part. Amen. Now there's a part that we have to pay, right? To keep it. Amen. We are warned to flee some things. That means if unrighteousness will go to heaven, then why would the writer tell us to flee youthfulness, to follow after godliness? Why does he tell us to follow after that? That means we have to maintain, amen, a clean and a pure vessel, amen, for the kingdom of God. And there's a part to play. Uh, Bishop Brown, if I buy you an SUV, right, it's good. You, I buy you, I donate you the SUV. It's beautiful for you to drive. But guess what? If you don't maintain that vehicle, one of these days, even though it was a gift, you never bought it, but you got to maintain it. God gave us salvation free, but we got to maintain the salvation. Yeah, and all that live godly, that means we have to live godly. Your body is the temple of God. If any man defile the temple, him will God destroy. That means my part, your part, is to protect, amen, to um, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. So there's a part, I got to protect that part. Amen. God's part, my part. Amen. The divine part, the human part. I got to protect it. Praise God. Then why did Jesus Doc, are you muted? All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Sorry. Amen. So why did the Lord Jesus say Many shall come in the latter part and say, and knock and say, let us in. And he said, from whence cometh thou? I don't know you. And they're going to say, well, Lord, I prophesy in your name. I preach in you. And God said, I don't know you. That means there is, amen, a standard that you and I have to keep to maintain in order to be a part of the kingdom of God or to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. And so, so you and I, but the good things about it is that God gives us the Holy Ghost to help us, amen, resist the devil and he will feed. We have the enablement on the inside of us. The Holy Ghost is the enablement, is the helper, is the paraclete that helps us, amen, to, to overcome, to resist, to fight, amen, to put up a, a fight against the enemy. We have the ability we have, amen, the enablement on the inside. That's what the Holy Ghost does to us. It's an enabler to resist and to fight, amen. So we have 
to be clean vessels. We have to, to make sure, amen, that we are godly, amen, and righteous in this present world. Listen what the scripture says. That is so, that is so potent and makes us fear. If the righteous can scarcely be saved, not the wicked, not the ungodly, if the righteous can scarcely be saved, where shall the wicked and the ungodly appear? If the righteous man, the, the man that does right things, that has right thoughts, that have right motive, that has right action, that have right display, that has right behavior, if he can scarcely be saved, where shall the wicked and the ungodly appear? So there is a standard to inherit the kingdom of God. Praise God. And lastly, in that fourth stage is, we can deceive ourselves when we associate with bad company and think it will not corrupt us. If we associate ourselves with other than ourselves, we will after a while be deceived. I like that scripture. I preached on it some times ago. The Bible said when Peter was brought out of prison, he joined himself to his own company. If we associate ourselves with the Baptist man, after a while, we're going to feel that the Baptist man is fully saved. If you associate yourself with Jehovah's Witness, preach alongside of them and they preach alongside of you, after a while, you're going to look at some moral attributes of them and say, man, uh, I think these people are safe too. Who you hang with after a while, they will deceive you. So we can be deceived by hanging out with them. Come on. And we can be deceived, but all of a sudden now, everybody is saying, I got to come down to the level of these, of these people in order to win them. All right? So, so don't let's not dress up to go to church. Let, let, let's go in a in our tear up jeans and and, and 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 let's 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 go to church that way and we will win them. Our, our suits, our suits are frightening them. They don't want to come to us because we just have been sued. So let's wear tear up jeans and and come to their church and and everybody can just come with your tear up jeans and so forth. And to, I, 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 I'm afraid that my Bible says. No man cometh except the spirit draws. I didn't know it, it is my, it's my low standard of dressing that draw people. I thought the Bible said no man cometh except the spirit draws. So then if we go to some place where they are a half naked, everybody going to go be half naked, go to church to win them too. Here, beloved. We can deceive ourselves when we associate ourselves with bad company and think we are not going to get corrupt. Why did the Bible say, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord? Why did the Bible say that? Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. We've got to be distinct. There's a distinction because we are light and they are darkness. So the distinction is already set. Light, darkness. The church is light. The world is darkness. We are life and they are dead. So there's a distinction already. I didn't set the distinction. Bishop Brown didn't set it. God said it. You are light set up on top of a hill. Light is different from darkness. 
Praise God. And, and, so, and so now we use the two words, uh, deception and, 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 and seduction, seduce. And, and, and seduction means temptation to lure somebody, to pull somebody. It, it, it's set in a bait. Amen. All right. And, and so the, the bait is set like, hello, how are you going to win me if you don't talk to me? How are you going to win me if you don't, don't come and eat, have dinner with me? How are you going to do that? And, and so we gone into them in a certain way. It's a bait, beloved. We've got to watch the bait. And if you bite the bait, you get deceived. You've got to be careful. Praise God. Amen. Uh, the decoy. Amen. The appeal is an appeal. It's a drawing power. Seduction is a drawing power. Amen. That, that draws people. Amen. And we've got to watch for the bait. Praise God. Amen. It's an enticement. Amen. It's an enchantment. It's a force. Seduction is a force. It's a spirit. Uh, and once you bite the bait, you're gone. And the devil is, it, devil, the devil is like a, a drug pusher. He's pushing these, the, the bait of seduction all over. And, and many people are biting the bait and taking the bait. Beloved, and that's where the great danger is that we've got to be careful. Amen. Remember, we are light of the world. We are set up on a hill. Amen. We are distinct. Jesus says, when I was in the world, he was the light of the world. Now I'm gone. He are the light. The church is the light of the world. Amen. And, and, and so uh, if uh, Jesus warns and said, if the salt has lost its saltness, then, then it is in trouble. Because it has no power to preserve. It has no power to help, amen, the meat or the, uh, uh, us from being rotten. So if we lost our saltness, we are ineffective, amen, for the world today. All right? And, and so when deception comes in, we are now ineffective to help the world, to rescue the world, to deliver the world to give life to the world as such. Uh, and so Jesus warns also that false prophet will come. Amen. Now the scripture says, these signs shall follow them that believe. The signs follow the church. The church don't run after signs. The signs follow the church. All right. And, and not because somebody speaks something and it comes to pass, doesn't mean that it was God. The, 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 the young girl with the spirit of divination said, these are servants of the living God. True. That's what she said. These are servants of the living God. But it was a wrong spirit that spoke those words. And after three days, Paul rebuked that spirit, cast it out of of, of the young girl and delivered the young girl from the bondage that she was under. And that's why the, 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 the owners of the young girl was, was very, very upset with Paul because their gain is now lost because they were using her as merchandise to speak into people's life and to tell them things. And it seemed whatever she told them was true. And they, were, they had to pay for that. For that, for, for that prophecy to come on their life. And so the owners of the young girl was making a profit. So it's not everything that is true is of God. That somebody say over your life that is of God. That is true. You got to watch the life of that person who speaks the prophecy. You got to watch the behavior of that person. John says there are many spirits gone out into the world. Try the spirit. Test the spirit. Even John, even the Lord Jesus commended a church. And he says, I commend you because there were some men who came in there and say they are apostles. But you did not accept their word. You try them. You test them and found them to be liars. You found them to be maybe apostles of the synagogue of Satan. They were not of us. They tried the spirit. And that's why John said, try the spirit. You got to know, and you will know, because many spirits are gone out into the world. And so, so beloved, here we are now. 
Amen. Amen. How do we discern and overcome deception? How do we look at that? Praise God. We've got to be alert and powerful and be knowledgeable of the nature of deception. Got to be sensitive. Amen. Our concern. And if you don't have it, ask the Holy Spirit to make your heart sensitive to deception. Just don't accept people because they say they are. Try them. Check them out first. Prove them. In the old church where I'm coming from back then, they, they, they try people. They just didn't quickly accept you. You got to try. And so we need to ask to make our hearts sensitive to all of them. And one of the best and most powerful way for your heart to be sensitive is to live a very passionate, intimate uh, life with God. Once you, you're connected and sensitive to God, amen, you will be able to identify and to weigh and to sense. We be a witness to Bible that we are the children. We be a witness that we are the children. Not because I say I am a child of God. There must be, we must be a witness that we are the children of God. Another thing also, we can be deceived. You got to be careful what you watch, what you read, and what you listen to. Now, I know some Christians watch everything on television. They rent every movie and watch it. You got to be careful what you're putting inside of you. It will defile your spirit. And a defiled spirit is an entrance for the spirit of deception to come in. You got to be careful. I mean, I say this as you're saying that. Even mothers buying Harry Potter's book for their children. No, apostolic cannot buy Harry Potter's book for their children. That's demonic books. Another way to, in order for you to be sensitive, amen, is that resist pride at any cost and be humble at all times, humility. And I don't think I can finish this series, Bishop Brown, without not teaching a little bit on humility because if your heart is not humble, it is, and that means pride is there. And if pride is there, you are deceived. Because you're going to think that God is with you when God is not with you. Because the Lord seeth the proud afar off, but he gives grace to the humble. So if God sees you afar off, there's no benefits that you're getting from God. And that's a deception for you to believe. I'm still saved and I'm still sanctified. No, pride. That's why the rise of pride goes before destruction and the heart is spirit before a fall. The greatest fortitude in the life of a believer is humility. Because God said he will visit the heart of a broken, a contrite heart and of a humble spirit. He will stop at that house. Another way to be able to overcome deception is to believe and obey God's word. Next, choose to live a life, a lifestyle of absolute surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That means you have, you have, you have surrendered your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's why a number of people cannot be subjected to leadership because their life is not surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's why in the great commandment, he said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, the other man with all his soul, with all your strength. Then he said, your neighbor as yourself. But you cannot love your neighbor as yourself until you first love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength then you will love your neighbor. So absolute surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The next thing, you've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And next, you've got to be dressed daily. 
in God's armor. You got to wear the armor of God. If you don't wear truth, you're going to be deceived. If you don't have a helmet of salvation, you're going to be deceived. You must be dressed in God's full armor at all times. Praise God. And in wrapping up this first session, praise God. Walk in the light and truth of God's word. Always walk in the light and truth of God's word. Honor, believe, and obey God's word to the best of your ability. Rest in the power of God's word and the promises that God gives you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You've got to believe that. Because the greater in you is Jesus. The greater that is on the world, in the world, is Satan. And he that is in you is greater than Satan. He made Satan. So he's greater than Satan. Praise God. You must believe that there is a devil out there. That he's the father of life. That he is subtle. That he has the wiles of the enemy. And he's a master psychologist. Amen. He has been dealing with mankind from the Garden of Eden. You can't fool him. He knows how. As a matter of fact, the devil has more patience than most of us. Because he knows if you continue to do one thing a little bit and a little bit after, he knows it's just a matter of time that you will be addicted to that particular thing. So he doesn't mind you, amen, uh, take a shot of a liquor one night, all right, until it become regularly, until... Ultimately, you become a full-fledged alcoholic. The devil has more patience than that, and more than most of us. He knows it's not the first time you walk on the grass that you build or make a pathway. It is several walks on that grass that makes a path. All right? So we got to be sensitive, all right, to a deceiver that means. Give glory to God in sincerity of heart. And adoration, always remembering that God will not, does not share his glory with no one. Give all the glory to God. And don't let no person idolize you. Let no man give you worship. Give it back to God. And if we, if we allow people to idolize us and take God's glory, we're going to be in trouble. And if you don't believe me, what I'm saying, dial up Nebuchadnezzar and ask him, and he will tell you. Don't do it. The praise must be given to God. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. This is our introductory night tonight. And, and then, the Lord's willing, we'll move into deeper 